Welcome to Get to Moving TV. I'm Dr. Chris Landon and I serve as your host. Here in the city of Ventura, we have so many things going on. The Ventura Adult Community Education has always been a source of pride for me. Uh, and there's different paths that people uh, take in their careers. The other thing we've been working on quite a bit is health, and uh, particularly around the issue of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, COPD. We've been working around the issues of healthy eating, active living. Uh, my guest today, Robin, welcome to Get Moving TV. Thank you, Dr. Landon. So tell us a little bit about those exact things. Uh, you, what, what, we got to meet each other through uh, my producer. You, I understand you have a show that's coming up. And uh, how did you get to your career? How, how would you guide uh, the people? I know sometimes midlife we change things around. That's exactly what I did. Uh, when I was 35, I was in the business world. I was uh, an executive director and a fundraiser. I used to train people to fundraise. So I was really sales and marketing. And I had a lot of stress. Uh, I was very overweight. Uh, I smoked. I drank. <laughs> and I had a midlife um, health epiphany. I decided that I was going to become a yoga teacher first, and uh, now I am. Uh, I teach yoga. I am a personal trainer, and I do corrective exercise, corrective and restorative exercise. I think one of the most popular shows on Caps TV is Mr. Fitness, and those eight episodes, if they are off by 30 seconds, they are calls to the station. Uh, I understand with your new show, uh, what, what, what's going to be the content with with your show? Well, it's 22 minutes of corrective exercises. Uh, several of the episodes are um, designed for different parts of the body. Uh, my favorite episode, and Terry's your producer's favorite mm -hmm. episode, is uh, stiff necks and sore shoulders. So we do 22 minutes of corrective and restorative exercises to help uh, with neck, neck and shoulder pain. And then we have a six minute interview with somebody in the community that provides uh, uh, pain free intervention or pain intervention like acupuncture or various uh, non-surgical uh, non and non-pharmaceutical interventions for pain. I know in, in Ventura County we really made a big effort in our emergency rooms to stop the narcotics uh, being prescribed and get out of my emergency room. So it's, it's really g good to see an alternative and complementary uh, medicine. It is very much a part of what we do now. What, what's the name of your new show? It's called Body Restore, Pain-Free Living. And uh, we're, we're going to be going into filming on that. It, but we've, we've written most of the shows. There's, there's not just me. Um, there's another trainer who's actually a restorative exercise specialist that's going to be doing the foot and ankle episodes. And we have a, we have we sort of split it up into areas of that are, there's there's a finite number of things that are typically bothering people. So we uh, have sort of narrowed it down to the common complaints: lower back pain, knee pain, neck pain, shoulder pain. And I understand you are going to help me out with our uh, COPD program in terms of people who have lung disease and really feeling comfortable walking. And that when you're on oxygen, it's even hard to go to an upper uh, cabinet. Uh, uh, so working on those things, we really appreciate appreciate everything that you're doing. It's so, going to be it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm, we're we're having a lot of fun with it. Well, I think your episodes are going to be you know, just as popular as Mr. Fitness, and we really look forward to your your upcoming show. So Ventura, we're going to get moving, pain free, restoratively, uh, with Robin. So we'll be right back. Welcome back. One of the joys of my existence is working with uh, Eddie Tadori from the Rhythmic Arts Project. And one time he said, uh, we're having this fundraiser. And I made this chair, which uh, is a picture of when I was in the Sea of Cortez. And there's a lone kayak and uh, the like. And we made it into a chair. And we called it Harmony in the Key of C. And uh, trying to keep a musical theme. I'm here today with Nils, which is we worked together uh, at that sale to, uh, to raise money for the Carpentry Arts Center. And I'm so proud that uh, you managed to make it down the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, so Nils, tell me, how, how did you get involved with the Carpentry Arts Center? 
Well, I've been in the, involved with the Carpentry Arts Center for about three or four years. I've been on the, I've been on the board of that terrific organization. And, and do you enjoy art or you enjoy being on boards? Or? Yes, on both accounts. I really enjoy the arts. And what I like about the arts is that the arts is so much more than just painting. Arts encompasses basically everything creative that people want to do and um, creating a space where that can happen in Carpinteria where people can go to express their creativity. That's something fantastic. Uh, how do you, what is your mission and, and then how do you get the money to, to support it? Well, for us, the mission is to really create a place in Carpentry, in the Carpentry Valley, where people can come to express their arts. And we've, we've been around for 15, 16, 17 years already. There's, Carpentry has always been a very artistic town. And from uh, even before 2000, there have been artists that came together and, and, and had a gallery space together. And one thing led to another, and it started an organization. And in 2005, they even purchased a piece of property right on Linden, right in the middle of, the, uh, middle of downtown. And they created a little art gallery and uh, some space before. And, um, and they um, start making plans to build an art center. And that is kind of where we are right now. We have great plans. Well, uh, tell me about these great plans. What, what's, what's coming up? Well, what we really would like to do, what's really our, um, our big, big project, is to build an art center right in the center of Carpinteria. And not just a regular building. The building needs to be a piece of art, too. And it is. It's been designed by a very famous local artist, um, Annie Newman. And um, that's, that's really going to be beautiful. So uh, you have an upcoming campaign. Or I think uh, Sherry's here. She's going to mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about program, but also you, uh, you have memberships. How, how do you go about supporting yourselves? Well, I think that when it, when it comes to supporting ourselves, we have a lot of events and we have a lot of memberships and some of the events Sherry will talk about a little later uh, because she's the one that really uh, spearheads all of, the, all of those. Um, and for us, what was really important, one, once we had the building plans, is to really dive into um, how are we going to get about this? Because building a big building is not something that happens overnight. So we did a big feasibility study to see if it's possible, of how it's possible to really erect this great building here. And so for the last several years, we, that, that's what we've been working on. We've been expanding our program significantly. We hire, we've hired an, a stellar executive director who you'll meet in a little, in a little bit. Uh, and we upgraded our facility quite a bit. Um, if you know a little bit about Carpinteria, it used to be right in the, across from the seal fountain, this gallery right tucked in the back. And if you go by there now, you'll see uh, a construction, very colorful sails, and it's very inviting. So those are some of the things we've done basically to get ourselves ready to start with a big campaign, which we'll probably do in the next coming year, year and a half. Well, very good. Nils, thank you so much for joining us. Explain the history of your organization. And, You're very uh, welcome. Ventura, we're going to be right back with Sherry, who's in charge of programs. Well, Ventura, welcome back. Today, Sherry is joining us uh, following her, her uh, board member. Sherry is the executive director of the Carpentry Art Center. And your director, uh, Nils, uh, the, on your board, was really excited about what's coming up. So what's, what's coming up there? Well, it's a real exciting time for the Carpentry Art Center. I want to thank you for having us on your show so we can share uh, with your audience. Um, we are in the process of a huge growth spurt. Um, Nils spoke about our building campaign. He spoke about the feasibility study. And now we're focusing on what we will have inside of that building. That was a part of the feasibility study as well. Uh, implementing programs, expanding programs, collaborating in the community, heightening the awareness of the Arts Center, which are all things that we've been doing. What a proud moment. So it's not just, it's not just about the wrapping. It's what goes inside there. Uh, so t tell us a little bit about the programs that you're already doing and, and then what the expansion, uh, what, what new programs are going to come? Well, some of the programs that we have in place now, we have our Art by the Sea Camp, which is a fine art program throughout the summer, starting in June, ending in the first week of August. Uh, we offer 
five weeks of fine art programming with two instructors who have their masters in fine arts. We found out that we have one of the few fine art programs for first through fifth graders in Santa Barbara County and we we're very proud of it. This year we actually sold out of our program. We had a wait list and we went from 40 participants to 60 participants this year. So it was really, really exciting. Uh, are older people uh, allowed or just uh, these first through fifth graders? Um, we will have classes, we're planning classes for, uh, for adults. Right now we have an exhibit. We host 12 exhibits throughout the year at our art gallery. Um, we, have art, we have art in gatherings that we offer to local artists to show their art and we host receptions and many events. A lot of things that we, we've decided to do within the city of Carpinteria mm -hmm are we would like to collaborate with organizations that are already in place. So that's how we met. Mm -hmm. So we're, we worked in a collaboration on our Art Nature event with Eddie Taduri, mm -hmm. which is an amazing event we pack out every year. Um, we're also working with Teen Art Fest, and that is a collaboration with Carp Cares for Youth. We have a two-day two summer program for teenagers. We have volunteers that show up for that, volunteer artists to teach. Mm -hmm. And we have a uh, collaborative effort with our um, girl, Boys and Girls Club, where they have kids who come down and they do tours, and they also do, they work with all of our different programs. So, are you an artist yourself, by the way? I just You know, I'm asked that often, and I'm not an artist, so to speak. Um, but I am, I, I have a love, a great love of art. So uh, we're talking painting, we're talking uh, watercolor, we're talking oils. All the above, sculpture, ceramics. Um, we're introducing a new program, hopefully where we'll partner with TVSB where we can introduce media arts to our, um, to our city and teenagers. Um, another program that we are hoping to launch, we'll be working with our local school district where we can come in and work with our children who participate in the after school program. So tell, tell me a story, put a, put a human face to this, some, some child who maybe was uh, withdrawn and came, came there and, and really helped them to express something. You know, I have, I have numerous There's stories to tell. Stories I do, I do, yes. and most of them come from parents of our Art by the Sea camp children. I've had parents that would call by the second week and just talk about how this child has been transformed from a child who has a love for art, who really understands art. Um, our Art by the Sea camp has an art history component, so we're actually teaching them what, more about what they're making than your average arts and craft program. And then, uh, in terms of working with the schools, uh, how, are you, do you go on to their campuses, or do they come down to you? Or I, I've tried to do things with schools, and it's, it's not easy. I mean, you have to get fingerprinted, and all kinds of things. We, we do both. Mm -hmm. um, we have a volunteer that's on our board, Marty Selfridge. She actually goes into the schools, our uh, middle school, on Fridays. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, docent-led tours by some of the schools. Our um, middle school and elementary school, they'll come in and be led by a tour of, of an exhibit. But uh, working in conjunction with our school districts is absolutely necessary because the arts is not as um, prominent as it has been in past. I know when I grew up, so we're we're very excited to be a part of that. Well, tell me as we finish up here, you have fundraising campaigns. Uh, what what for a membership? You sign up for a membership. You can support the events. How, how does uh, one sign up for a membership, and what are the benefits? Um, one may sign up for a membership with the Carpinteria Arts Center by logging onto our website, uh, www.carpinteriaartscenter.org. Um, and we have different levels of membership, uh, individual membership, we have couples, we have a friend of the Arts Center. And the incentives are you get discounts on classes and programs. Um, depending on which level you come in, you get a discount on entering into our show. Um, but more than that, you get to support your local Carpentry Arts Center, and that is probably um, the best part of being a member at the Carpentry Arts Center. Well, Sherry, th thank you so much for joining us and, and explaining about the Carpentry Arts Center. We look forward to events and helping to publicize them, and of course, getting you lots of members. Uh, we'll be able to play this show up in, on public access TV up in Santa Barbara County as well. Uh, there are our partners. So, uh, Ventura, you get moving to Carpentry as well. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back. Ventura, we're here today with Jamie, uh, who's here from the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we've really been concentrating on the Carpentria Art Center, but Boys and Girls Clubs are very close to my heart. We, we work with the, uh, out in West Ventura, mm -hmm. uh, along Ventura Avenue with their club and the public housing there, and boys really had our heart for it. Sometimes as we're raising money for a leaky roof, uh, we go to local contractors, and the community really comes together. Mm -hmm. So. Jamie, t tell me about Santa Barbara's Boys and Girls Club. I understand you're an area director. And mm -hmm. So um, the United Boys and Girls Clubs of Santa Barbara County, we have uh, clubhouses from Carpinteria all the way up to Lompoc. Um, we have five clubhouses located in Carpinteria, Westside Santa Barbara, Goleta, Campus Point, which is out on the UCSB campus, and then Lompoc. We're also um, lucky enough to have a 55-acre um, camp in uh, San Ynez Valley. So um, there's rock climbing, hiking, a swimming pool, a great retreat center. Um, so we were able to utilize that for our kids as well. Yeah, so t tell me more about the camp and the camp. Do you, do you uh, uh, work out there? Do you get to play with the kids still? I do, I do get to play with the kids. And um, we're actually planning a spring break camp. It's our first time we're offering. It's a three night, four day trip for our campers, ages third grade through high school. Um, it's only $100 for our families, and um, they get sign-up bonuses, so some of our families only have to pay $50 for a week at camp. And again, they get all the activities that I mentioned before, like rock climbing, zip lining, um, all meals, and it's actually staffed by our clubhouse staff. So the kids already have relationships with these staff, and so they're really excited to go this year. Well, we, we work really hard on uh, safety net. Uh, for health care. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to weave a, a net so tight that no child falls through it. And we've always seen Boys and Girls Club as a partner. So tell me some stories about maybe the times when you've had to act as a safety net for a child or a family. Or so um, unfortunately bullying is, is a you know, nationwide problem, especially cyberbullying, and um, uh, our school district does all that they can, but, um, you know, it carries over now. It, it comes to the club, it goes home with them, so something we've really been focusing on is a stand tall program um, to teach kids to stand up to bullies and how to stand up to cyberbullying, and that adults are there, you know, to support them, and we're not their parents, so we can be a unbiased ear and, you know, support. Maybe they made a negative decision that's now coming back to them, and um, we're able to provide that uh, support and uh, mentorship for them to make sure that they're on the right path to deal with how to deal with either being a bully if they are mm -hmm. or um, being bullied. I think a lot of my time in, in clinic I spend taking screen time away from kids because mm -hmm. we just we go for two hours or less and look at my teenage girls with headaches I go hi there's no cell phone allowed in your bedroom you mm -hmm. have to go to sleep you can't be talking about who loves you, who doesn't love you, yeah. and oh my gosh, back and forth, it's really, uh, it's some crazy times. And we had one problem with a program that was set up for uh, men to uh, uh, let their girlfriends know that they love them, uh, kind of at mm. random, because no man re remembers that. Right. <laughs> uh, and this uh, one fellow had set it up so that it said, I hate you to this girl, about every five seconds, she had a oh. message on her phone, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill oh. yourself, kill yourself. So. Yeah, uh, the cyberbullying is just... Oh, it breaks my heart. Yeah, yeah, we have a very strict cell phone policy at the club, especially um, our elementary kids, they're not allowed to have it out at all. Um, we offer activities for them so they can be entertained mm -hmm. that way. And then our middle schoolers were just now implementing a policy like no social media and things because, I mean, they'll sit there and be next to each other and texting each other. And it's just, it's not a healthy environment. And that's why... You know, we, we push after school programs because if a parent's not home after school, their kid is going to go to that screen time and you don't know what's happening when they're unsupervised. So at least with us, they're in a supervised environment where if they are doing some kind of social media or something that's on a computer that we can see that, you know, we're monitoring. And the world has become so small in terms of interacting with the, mm -hmm. with the world. So with Camp Whittier, uh, we, we had a, an asthma camp. Uh, from Oxnard, we took the kids to the beach. Three quarters of the kids had never seen the ocean. Oh. They live, whatever, a mile mm -hmm. away and they'd never seen the ocean. Every single one of them had heard a gunshot though in their life, which is, 
uh, something different mm -hmm. uh, to me. So with your camp, t tell me what, what kinds of experiences, what are the kids telling you back? What, what, what do they gain yeah. from the camp? So Camp Whittier is uh, very unique. We actually closed down all of our clubhouses throughout Santa Barbara County um, one day during the summer and we bus all of our kids up to Camp Whittier um, through a partnership with Santa Barbara Airbus and um, they get to just spend the day up there and just be outside and you know luckily there's no cell phone service there's no wi-fi um, so they really just get to connect with nature and um, you know i took a group of kindergartners on a hike last time i was up there so we get up to the top and at the top of the trail you can see all of lake chuma which is normally gorgeous but it was really interesting to teach them about how the drought you know it has made lake chuma go from giant to like this little itty bitty um, section of water but coming down, um, I had one little boy that, you know, it's that, those, that rambunctious little boy that's always running. And I'm like, don't run, don't run, you're gonna fall, you're gonna slip. And he's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Finally let goes of my hand and instantly just slips. And he just gets up and laughs. And I'm sitting here thinking like, if that had happened, you know, on the sidewalk or any, anywhere else, he would have been in tears and probably a bloody mess. But, you know, so then we were talking about like how he, there was padding because it had just rained and there's all these leaves and that's how he was okay. So it's kind of an interesting connection back to, back to nature and having them, you know, think about how, how nature is and how important it is. Yeah, and I, I, I think kids take that home, you know, mom, that shower's too long, Lake Kachuma's uh -huh. shrinking and, uh, and, and the like. Well, one of the, we're here at Ventura Adult Community Education and it's an extraordinary uh, place. How did you get to your job? What, what was your path? What was your arc in life? Did you end up in a little different? Uh... I did. You know, um, I grew up from a family of teachers, and so of course um, I was like, I'm never going to be a teacher. I, I love kids, but I could never be in a classroom and have a curriculum. I'm, I'm too creative, and so it was actually I graduated from college with a sociology degree, and I moved back. I was born and raised in Carpinteria, so I moved back to Carpinteria. And um, I had trouble getting a job, like any recent college graduate. And so I started volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club. I was actually volunteering doing the art program. And um, kind of one thing led to the, another. The director there um, had been the director there when I attended when I was younger. And he said, I'm retiring. What's your background in? And I, I told him, you know, education and nonprofit. And so he was like, apply for the job. And so here I am three years later. And I've been the club director. And then I was recently promoted to the area director. So. So really the best is just get in there, volunteer your yeah. time, get people, let them get to know you, and then slowly but surely as jobs open up and, mm -hmm. and the, the right thing occurs. Yeah, the Boys and Girls Club is very unique and, um, you know, we, we try to build with from, from within. You know, we're a unique after school program in that we service everybody. Our membership's only $40 a year, so we're affordable and we offer scholarships on top of that. So, um, you know, you can start in, I have a, a high school staff who started with me when she was 15 in high school and she's now 21 and she's still been there and you know she's lucky that she can get a job because it is so hard for kids to get jobs nowadays so we really try and build up from within. Uh, so how, how do they interact with the, with the older community? Do you have a computer center where they can mentor? Mm -hmm. Because there's so much to learn from older people as well and yeah. as a teenager we're so into ourselves. Yeah well yeah as you said um, the youth are our next generation that actually ties into our auction theme this year which is um, today's youth are tomorrow's stars. So um, you know we have a junior staff program which they have to complete 25 hours of community service so they will work with our the elderly homes in our community and either sell up, set up like Valentine's lunches or um, dances they love doing that. Um, and we also have the opportunity to act as a community center. And starting February 28th, we're actually gonna be open Saturdays as well, so that we can serve an either even greater population and, and get some more people involved with what we do. Well, and, and tell me about how you interact with the Carpinteria Arts Center. So the Carpinteria Arts Center is, is near and dear to our hearts because arts is something, as um, Sherry, the executive director, stated, is missing in our schools. And, um, you know, it, it's somewhat lacking in our after-school program as well because we don't have a dedicated art person. So we collaborate with them with either bringing kids down to their teen art fest, um, which our kids were able to complete a beautiful mural last year that's now hanging in Carpinteria, or um, through our music program, um, through their new building, we'll be able to bring our kids down and participate in, in musics and collaborate on even donations and grants and um, just get art truly in the Carpinteria community. Well, there, there's so many musicians in the Santa Barbara there region. Is. Tell me more about your music program. So it's called Music Makers, and we actually received a grant from the Thunder Music Foundation. So we got um, 
guitars donated and um, pianos and so it's it's a new program that um, we're reaching out and again working with the Carpentry Art Center to get musicians to come in and teach our kids um, just basic skills because you know art in general is such a way for kids to express themselves when they're having trouble. We recently had an artist come in and work with our teen girls who are having trouble expressing what was happening to them in high school and it was a great outlet and she interpreted you know their little squiggles and and everything like that so it was really powerful for them to see. So, and so we've got music, we've got mm -hmm. art, uh, any drama in there? We do do we drama with our, our younger kids. Um, with ages kind of five to seven, we've realized that's a good way for them to express themselves through um, puppet shows or um, you know reading stories and then acting it out. Um, they love kind of acting out anything. <laughs> well, Jamie, thank you so much for, for joining us. The, the teen boys and girls clubs, uh, are really a treasure for us, for our younger kids, our older kids, how they fit into our community. Mm -hmm. uh, so get out there and support those events, uh, both at the Carpentry Art Center, uh, Valentine's Day, it's time to support it all. So uh, Ventura, it's time for you to get moving, Carpentry Art Center and Boys and Girls Club.